sometimes noises happen. So thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we are the Arts Council for Long Beach. My name is Judy Estrada and I am the marketing manager for the Arts Council. Hi everyone. My name is Anissa hey. and I'm the marketing associate at the Arts Council. Hi everybody, I'm Lisa DeSmith, Director of Programs at the Arts Council for Long Beach. We'll be presenting the Artist Registry Workshop and I'll be um, taking questions in the chat. You can all please just keep your microphones muted till the end. Okay, so with that being said, if you have any questions, like Lisa said, go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get started. Anissa, would you like to start us off? Yeah, so um, we have the Artist Registry Workshop artist registry workshop today um and if lisa you want to move on to the next slide we'll go ahead and go through the table of contents or items to discuss today um first we'll be starting off with what is the registry how can it help you then we'll be talking about the requirements to join um things you need like prepared materials when you officially decide to make your account tips and advice for your page these are going to be really important how to register, we will go through that. Also after the presentation, we'll, we'll go um, item by item and then how to edit your page. So um, Judy will be, will be, me and Judy will be going back and forth during this presentation. Um, so yeah, Lisa, you can hit the next slide. So what is the artist registry? That's the biggest question that we get asked. Think of the artist registry as a, a, a web page for you on our site. On the web page, you show examples of your art and how to contact you. And we have this artist registry because we are always getting asked for artists, whether um, we are partnering with somebody or we have a convention. Long Beach is a big convention city. We've created this database to amplify the artists in Long Beach. So if you can read, uh, we also market, we heavily market this. Uh, it, in 2020, it was on uh, NBC News when we did the COVID cover up, all the murals that popped up when businesses started boarding up. So that was like one of the a really big catalyst. And ever since then, we've just gone, garnered more and more traction. So it's really a way for you to highlight yourself on our website. And if whenever we are looking for work, looking for artists, we this is the first place we go to. Whenever we receive opportunities or artist calls, this is who we send them to. Next slide. You're muted, Anissa. Sorry. <laughs> so how does the registry work for you? Um, so just think about it. Judy touched on it a little bit. Um, the first big thing is exposure. We actively promote the artist registry. Um, if you remember in the summer, we had a curatorial intern who curated a show um, using this artist registry. Another thing is we also um, had like weekly promotion of artists from the registry. So that's like a big thing. Um, so it's lots and lots of exposure. Another thing is you are always the first to know about opportunities. Um, when you make an account or create a profile, you also check a box to receive the newsletter and emails from us. And once you're on there, you're gonna be the first person to receive like any um, calls, any announcements we have, you're on the mailing list for that. The next thing that Judy also talked about a little bit is it is the first place that Arts Council and our partners go to look for artists. Um, and just a couple examples of different partners that have used the artist registry, we had the Metro use our registry for artist top cards. So um, all of the artists that were used for that 
like top card project all but one of them were from our registry another example is the parks department did a new plan for public art and our registry is actually included within the plan for them to use to find artists um, a couple other things are like the lb artist call that was from our registry and their next call, they're also gonna be prioritizing people from our registry and looking at our registry to look for those people. Um, so that's just like huge exposure. And it's also like, it's just a great like database for people looking for artists. So if you're on there, like it's just one step closer to success. Let's go. Next slide, please. So we, Pretty often hear from artists that they've been selected for work or they've been commissioned via the artist registry. Here is a testimonial from Rivka Nahor Nahorai. Being on the artist registry got me noticed by Long Beach Arts Council. So I was able to be part of a curated show in one of their spaces, plus an honorarium. Also, some locals who wanted Long Beach art bought prints of my work from seeing my website on the registry. So also, when we do anything, we, we want to make sure artists are getting paid for their work. Mute. Um, so your eligibility and requirements. What makes you eligible? You must be an artist because it's an artist registry. Um, we do have a note on our registry it's open to all genres so if you're someone and you're looking at it and you're like my genre is missing just reach out to us it is open to all artists but you must live in Long Beach if you don't live in Long Beach there are um ways that we can accommodate artists who don't who can't or don't live in Long Beach but work actively in Long Beach so if you actively create and do a lot of work in Long Beach you can be on the artist registry next slide So what do you need to sign up? You're going to need to think of and have some things set aside before you get to starting to fill out the application. If I were you, uh, number one, you have to do this from a computer. You cannot do it from your phone or a tablet. It has to be done from a PC. If you need help with that, feel free to reach out to us and we can always help you get access to a computer. So that way you can sign up for the registry. Um, so you're going to need, I suggest opening up a folder and keeping everything in one folder on your desktop so you can access that and also have options so you can see what, feel what you want to, you can put more than four examples, fill out your page. Uh, you're going to need an artist statement. It's just a short statement or a bio about yourself and your work. That is very important. It tells the viewer who you are. And it's, kind of, it's almost like um, getting to know you. So that way, somebody looking at your page will know who you are and what type of art you make. And if you want to dive into like why you create what you create, that just adds more depth to your art and will get the viewer to stay on your page a little bit longer. Next, you want to have four examples of work. You're going to have a header image, the header image at the top of the page, and then four examples of your work, along with a headshot. Um, some artists don't want to put their actual face on the headshot. Some get creative. So either way, you're going to need a headshot, four examples of your work, and an artist statement. Lisa? OK. So here are some tips, um, some advice for the registry. So we are going to go through it. So you'll kind of get a better idea of what we're talking about once we do that. But you want to save your account information. So once you put in your account information, you want to save it just so you can make edits. So um, pick a strong password, save and remember your strong password. Make sure you write it down. Make sure you write your account name down. Um, these things are important because Artists are always growing, so you want to keep updating your account with like new work and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is we have a lot, a lot of artists. Sorry, <laughs> if you could just go back. Sorry. Um, so we have a lot of artists on our registry, so we do have to keep 
the images a smaller size. So make sure you resize your images to two megabytes. Um, if you don't do that, you're gonna have an error on your page. So um, just keep that in mind. We encourage people to use images, not links. So a lot of times people will like put a link to their Instagram of their work or like a link to their website. Um, this makes it so it's like, your work isn't showing up on the page. You just have this blank link. You can add a link as like a supplemental. Um, if say you're a poet, you can add a link to the poem, but still have the poem there, you know? Um, the only time you'll be using links is if you have like a Spotify or like a YouTube channel and some of your work is on YouTube. You can use those videos and link it into the profile. But if you're showing a picture of your art, like a print, you're gonna wanna use a photo of the print. Um, and that way you have a cohesive, nice profile that people can just look at and go boom, boom, boom. Um, we all know people don't have like the craziest attention spans anymore. So that's why we wanna do that. Another thing is include your best work for the best results. Again, that is why saving your account information is really important because you know, today you can put something up and then two weeks from now you have an even better piece to put up. Um, the next thing is an artist statement is not to be overlooked. If you're someone that doesn't really want to put like a long artist statement, that's fine. But just make sure you are reeling people in um, and being thoughtful. Judy put in to use a dream dictionary. If you want to expand on that, Judy, you can go ahead. Sometimes it's hard to come up with an artist statement or I've, ex I've thought that it was hard. Um, personally coming up with my own artist statements. So I found that going through a dream dictionary, because I don't know, I guess, I guess when you're, when I am in the space of creating, it's almost like I'm dreaming. So it just helps me get to that spot and helps me figure out what I want to say. Thank you. Next slide, please. So how to edit your page. First, you're going to need these three things, your username, your password, and the images and links that you are going to switch up. So make sure you save your username. Uh, if you lose it, if you forget anything or need help, feel free to email us. Uh, the password, you enter the same password that you used on the application. So just make sure you save all of those. and. Again, the same thing, make sure you use high quality photos that are two megabytes or less that show your work in a crisp, clear format. And what I mean is, is make sure that like if you are a performer, make sure that you are the focus of that rather than like the whole, like the whole crew because maybe the viewer isn't going to necessarily be able to pick you out. Uh, if you are photographing, uh, a painting that you did, make sure that it's just a painting and no background behind there. So that's what I mean. Next slide. Okay, so some frequently asked questions are, when will my profile be approved? So I know that in the past, it's been kind of like, oh, we don't know when it's gonna get approved. But now profiles are approved on Wednesdays um, and it does take anywhere from a week to two weeks to get your profile up and approved just because um, like sometimes like we got to go through it a little extra, but usually you can expect it to be approved by the end of the Wednesday. Um, the other thing is how much does it cost? A lot of people ask how much does it cost to be on the registry and it's actually free. The Arts Council, um, we wanna support artists. And so we wanna make sure that we have a place where um, artists can showcase their work and you know find work and get paid. Um, so that's just a service that we do. Um, and then it says, do I have to live in Long Beach? And I know I addressed it before, but, um, ooh, excuse my typo there. <laughs> But expect exceptions can be made for artists that don't live in Long Beach if they do significant amount of work exhibiting or teaching in Long Beach. 
So um, we like to say if you actively live, work, or play in Long Beach, because um, a lot of like doing art is like playing. Um, and then if there are any other questions, we'll take those at the end, but um, we can move on to the next slide. So the next slide is, is our last slide. This is how to get in touch with us. Uh, we, you can come to our office. We suggest calling ahead to make sure somebody is there that can help you. Our offices have been closed for a long time, but we do have some good news that we're starting to open up more. So we still call ahead, just make sure, but in the future we'll be open more. Uh, you can also email us info at artslb.org. You can also call us at 562-435-2787 or 562-435-ARTS. So next we are going to get into uh, the artist registry and what it looks like when you go to register. Anissa, do you want to go over that? Yeah, um, would you like me to do the sharing or Lisa would, I, I have it up already so I could totally do it. Okay, let me get this going. All right, can everybody see this okay? Okay, so this is the um, application, but actually I'm gonna go back and show you how to get there from our homepage. You're gonna go to artist registry right up here hard to miss. And then once you click there, you can either do the drop down menu and hit join the ACLB registry, or you can just click on the page and you'll see it. So um, after you are like, okay, I'm eligible. I have my work. I'm going to go through it. You can start the application proce process. And so the user data, this is your most important part. Um, put in your email and um, Put in a username so i'm just going to show y'all if you put in a username you can't see it so whatever username you're using make sure it's the one you want to like make sure you have it down you will get an email with your username at the end of this um but just for like being safe um write it down <sighs> password you have to use a strong password Word. So, you know, don't make it too easy like ABC123. Um, it won't let you submit it if the password is weak or very weak. Um, the next thing is administrative information. So what you're looking at here is for us. This is not going to be public. It says right here, um, this is only for us. It will not be displayed. So we want to know your like legal name here. If you have an artist name, that will be later. So put in your name, your phone number, your mailing address. So we do check to see that your address is in Long Beach. Um, if it's not, we might like reach out and be like, hey, like you're not, you know, I'm seeing that your address is somewhere else. Um, and then we might talk to you about it. Um, so make sure you put in your address and stuff like that. The next is the registry information. Um, you click these boxes because you're telling us that yes, this is my work that I did and you're giving us consent to post this on our website. So you're gonna check those boxes and then you go into your actual, what's gonna be on your profile. So this is artist details. Type of listing, um, if you're an artist, just one person, go ahead and hit artist. If you're a group, like a dance group, or like an organization that does, you know, like an, an art collective, you can totally hit group. Display name is going to be what we're gonna see. So if your name is Anisa, but your artist name is Anisi, and you wanna be called by Anisi in the art world, you're gonna put Anisi here. Um, this is where you're gonna put your statement. So it says max 500 words. You do not need to hit 500 words, but whatever fits you, whatever fits you best is gonna go over there, bless you. Um, so featured image is going to be the image that goes on the header. So that is like the header of your page, like a Facebook cover. So um, make sure that you choose a photo that's gonna look best uh, as the first thing that they see. So you'll upload your file here. Um, 
and then here's where you're going to put your headshot or your like if you don't want to put a headshot maybe a creative like bitmoji or like another piece of art or a self-portrait um this is public contact information so you have to put a public contact name you can put your artist name um, and there is a spot for a phone number and an email address so it's not required but if you want people to be able to reach out to you you can put an email address like your artist email if you want to put your phone number you can you don't have to but just to be clear this is going to be public um so keep that in mind artist link so this is also really important um you can't just type in like your um your um like username in here you have to physically go and like grab the right link so you can be like okay i'm gonna put a facebook i'm put my facebook home page um i have a youtube i can put my youtube page and these are just other ways um if people are even more interested in you they can be like okay i like their paintings i'm gonna click on their instagram and see if they have more paintings on instagram or i like their music i want to follow them on spotify so you can click these boxes and put in your link. Make sure that they are not broken links because it's super duper sad when you wanna see someone's work and you hit the link and you can't open it. We also will not post broken links. So if we see a broken link on there, we will delete it um, before posting. All right, so um, this is if you wanna add public um, projects. Um, like, you know, I've been in these shows, so you can add those in there. Um, but now we're going to get into your work so you can pick one category or two um, i'm a visual artist so i usually would hit visual arts but like if i wrote poems i would also hit literary arts you know i don't know why i said you know <laughs> and then um once you hit like one of the things it shows you if you're in visual arts, there's so many different like genres. So you can hit all of the ones that apply that you're gonna be showing. So you could hit digital media, like fiber, like whatever fits you and whatever you're showing on your page, you can click those. Um, next is when you're gonna actually upload your work samples. So primary category one, you're gonna pick if it's gonna be an image, a link, or you're gonna upload a physical video. So if you're a painter or you have pictures of your work, you click an image and then you pick a file, make sure it's less than two megabytes. And then you give it a title, you give it the year and then you describe it. So it's always important. Um, I personally, I usually never describe my work. I describe like the medium I use, but I don't like to give anything up on what it means to me. I like people to interpret it. But if you are not like that and you want to explain to people, you can put that in there. There's a max of 50 words. Um, so you do three of those. Then um, you go into your artist demographics. And basically, if you hit yes, you can. Um, so the reason for this is if you put your demographic and let's say there's a call for Asian artists for Asian American Pacific Islander month. If you hit that you're Asian and you are Asian, which is like, if you're not, don't hit it. <laughs> um, people can actually filter the, um, the artist registry to pick, to look at only Asian artists, right? If um, there's a call for indigenous artists and you're indigenous, you can hit that. If you don't want to do it, it's totally fine. Um, but it is another way to help like filter through artists if you identify with the community. You can also um, click your gender. If there's a call for women artists, a call for queer artists, then you can um, you can hit that. Um, age, you really don't have to do all of it. It's just whatever you feel comfortable doing. Um, your sexuality. Do I identify as LBGT? LGBTQIA. I don't know. You know, you just like, you just got to figure it out. Um, and then, I mean, whatever you're comfortable with, you would hit, and then you hit um, consent to provide identity information. And that is like giving us consent so that people can search you based on that information. Um, and you will do what is best 
for you. Um, so once you fill everything out, you would hit submit your profile and it may take some time, but once you hit submit, you should get a page that says thank you. And if you check your email, you'll get an email um, to activate your account. So in order to edit your photos or edit your account, you do need to activate your account so you can actually log in. So make sure after you submit it, you open your email and activate your account. The other option is to save and continue later. So when you hit that, you get this link. So save this link if you don't have time to finish it and you have 30 days to come back. Um, after 30 days, this link is broken. You're gonna have to start all over again. So if you don't, right here. Um, if you want, you can email it to yourself, but um, we are a nonprofit, so things can be a little glitchy sometimes. So your best bet is, even if you're gonna email it to yourself, just copy paste and keep that link saved somewhere. All right, so that is the run through of how to join the registry. Um, and then Judy is now gonna show y'all some examples of good and needs improvement profiles. Really quick before we move on to that, um, one thing that sometimes happens is that people think that the profile is submitted. If you don't get a confirmation, then that means it may not have successfully submitted. So make sure that you get that confirmation um, we do have pending applications and we will try and reach out if we see that. But um, if, it, if you don't get that confirmation, it means that it wasn't successful. And we're just gonna give Yes, awesome. Before I could even. Queen, you're muted. <laughs> so my favorite thing to do is to talk when I'm muted. So um, here's an example of a profile that I created. Uh, this is not my work. This is from a project that we did of an artist, Get a Grip, and his sister. So this profile that I created, this is a header image. And this is what you'll see when you first come on. And this is the artist statement. This is what your profile image will look like. This is the example of the work. And over here will be your links. If you have multiple genres of art that you create, you can submit all of those. And this is what it looks like when you put a link. So you don't really see anything. There's no preview. There's just the highlighted words. So that's why I say to be, that's what I was saying to be thoughtful with your artist statement. And if you need help with that, like I said, the, the dream dictionary that helped me. And here is an example of a, a good, a good page, in my opinion. This is artist Cody Lusby. He actually was selected uh, by a local hotel. I believe it was the Marriott. And so the, the Marriott came to us. They wanted a mural. We search through the muralist. So that's why the genre is important. If you do more than one genre, select all of them. This he is a muralist. Uh, we submitted it, we submitted the artist registry link to the Marriott. They went through the muralist, they saw his profile page, and they wanted to work with him. This is actually the mural that he did at the Marriott. This is an example of his artist statement gives a little bit about his Long Beach connection, three paragraphs, talking about his work, a little backstory and some recent shows that he's had. 
And I just want to add to, we will be doing two workshops this year. One is an artist statement workshop and one is a photography workshop to photograph your artwork. Those will be happening later in the spring. So make sure you're signed up for our newsletter. And if you're on our registry, you'll get notifications for those workshops and be able to get assistance with that. Yes, and so here are some examples. This work is well-captured photo of his mural a little description about how the work came to be, a YouTube link to his video, and here's another mural photo. Here's a piece that he created in 2019 to show that not that he does more than just murals. This shows like the depth of detail. So having a few examples will really make the viewer stay on the page. Like Anissa was saying earlier, we live in, in a time where people scroll so fast and there's new things flashing in front of our eyes every three seconds that if somebody has to click a link, they're not really going to. They'll just go to the next page, the next artist that has everything there. So with that being said, uh, Anissa or Lisa, do you have anything to add before we take questions? I just I wanted to say, sorry, <laughs> I'll just finish. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm a huge, huge procrastinator and I still haven't made a profile for myself. And this class is going to inspire me or this workshop has encouraged me to make my own profile. So I did take photos of my work recently. Um, and I'm just gonna encourage everybody, don't put it off, you know, just do it, get your name out there because you never know what's out there waiting for you. I'm trying to get um, an image up one second. <laughs> So um, when we talked about opportunities, one thing that we wanted to share with you, you all are the first to actually publicly know this. We haven't made the official announcement, but we received a grant from Bloomberg um, to do creative crosswalks in um, the Washington neighborhood. And we are going to be using the artist registry for submissions for this public art project. And so we will be having the announcement coming out and that'll be going out to our artist registry. So it's another reason why we really wanna, we wanted to do this workshop so that everybody could have the opportunity and have time to get their artist registry up. Um, and so we're gonna be using the artist registry profiles with um, a, a Google form, but it's mainly gonna be through the artist registry profiles um, to, to present artists for this grant. So we really wanna make sure that this opportunity, there's also other opportunities coming down the pike. Um, the airport has a call right now for artists um, and that's up on our website. And the murals at the airport were also from our registry. So there's a lot of opportunities coming up. Um, there's another opportunity that we'll be sharing through to the artist registry for the aquarium. There's an artist call for that. So, that, so there's a lot happening. <laughs> Um, I don't know if there's any any other information about the Bloomberg grant that anybody wants, Cynthia, if you want to share, but we wanted to present that opportunity as well. Yeah, you covered everything. Thank you, Lisa. In the chat, I put the link that you use to access your page. Yes, yeah, so that's the link that you use to access your page once you're published. I also put artists registry editing instructions in there and that has the link as well. If you have any issues, again, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you. And as a reminder, as Lisa stated, and it's in the instructions that you are not, unfortunately at this time, you're not able to change your header image and we're totally able to help you with that. So feel free to reach out.
Does anybody have any other questions or? I have a question. Okay. Um, are podcasters and journalists, uh, for the purposes we're discussing, considered artists? And also, could somebody please explain what the different options are as to how to upload audio and video files? In other words, I saw there was a YouTube video. Is that just a, a URL that was pasted in that makes it display? Or can we also upload directly from our computer? Uh, and are there other uh, platforms besides YouTube that you ha can integrate with just embedding a URL? It, we take SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, most, yeah. yeah, most links. Go ahead. Do you have something to add, Anissa? Um, yeah, I was going to say like Vimeo as well. Um, if you already have like videos published, you can use that. It might just be easier to post like video and audio through links, but for photos, you definitely want to just upload a photo. Um, and what about if we have an audio or a video file on our computer? Can we yeah, upload it to? You can you can host it in other words. Okay. And so, yeah. what about my first question? Is are podcasters and journalists considered artists for this? Yes. I don't know that you're able to to upload your audio file. I, I believe you're only able to link, Lisa. Yeah, I don't think you can upload um, videos and audio. It's it's just the link. So yeah, it, it's just too large for our website. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Okay, thanks. And then it, it depends on where you you post the the link, whether it'll display a preview of, of the YouTube or not. Um, and so that's really important to be careful about. So if you're posting the link in the section that has, um, uh, it, it might be easier if we go back to the form for that specific question, because it's kind of specific on where it'll display. Um, maybe while that while we're doing that, Jennifer had a question. Yeah, hi. Um, sorry, I, I, my voice is kind of bad right now. Um, I I was wondering, is there a specific way that you do? You guys actively market to the public for the the website, the artist, or the registry, um, or or is there like a specific way that you got people to know about it to go there to pick out artists and things like that? A lot of a lot of it is is our own internal um, advocacy work that we do specifically with the city and a lot of um, like county groups and and then word of mouth is also spread. We have done advertising in terms of like our we did profiles throughout the summer of all the of not all but we did we profiled um, people from the registry on our social media and on our website. Um, so a lot of it has been word of mouth or just, we've just really heavily pushed it um, in all of our communication and meetings that we've had with city officials, with other organizations that we've worked with. I would say, um, and even with, with groups that do curatorial work. Um, so there's a lot of curators in Long Beach that use our registry. So it's really just more word of mouth networking that we've used. Um, we haven't actually done any paid advertising or anything like that. Okay, that, that's fair. That sounds that sounds good enough, honestly. Um, I, I might have missed this. Um, is it pro prohibited to like do the links that go to like your stores? Like if you have like an online Etsy or something like that, or you just want it to stay just to the, the graphics, the pictures, whatever? I I would say if you want to put a link to your store, yes, that's fine. Maybe you put that on the website, put that as your website, but I would not use it as, as an example of your work because like, again, right. it's just, yeah. So maybe take, use a photo of what is on Etsy okay. on your page, and then they can link to your page there underneath your header. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. No more questions. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Oh, just really quick. I just want to okay. um, answer that other question. So if you scroll down to, to the work sample section right there. So if you add your link there to YouTube, that's where it would display. Um, otherwise, it's it's going to be just the link. That makes Thank sense. you so much. Thank you. Great. Uh, I'm Mark. And uh, my I'm just wondering, are you finding most artists uh, refresh their work um, regularly on uh, 
on their page or are you uh, are people pretty much leaving the same images for very long periods of time like that's a great question. I think it's a mixed bag. I think the artists that know, you know, about the opportunities and that's partly why we're doing this workshop is because we want everybody, if you have a page, refresh it because, you know, eyes are on it and, and we want people to, um, to keep it updated. I think it's really important and that makes our website more um, user-friendly and, and more relevant. And so we hope, we want to encourage people to update it more. And so that's partly why we're doing this workshop to get people to update it more. I think it's a mixed bag. People who are active artists and know about the opportunities are going to want to keep it up to date. Great, thanks. And we can do that on our own once the page is activated. We don't have to go through you when it's changed. Okay. Correct, yeah. You'll get an email um, from WordPress that will tell you to activate it. Once you receive that, it, it'll give you instructions on how to update your page. Um, and I think Judy also put a link to those instructions. And um, we may do a separate workshop for that because that can be a little tricky. And as Judy said, the only thing you cannot edit is your header image. So if you need that edited, just go ahead and email um, any of us at the Arts Council and you know Judy, Anissa, or I, or the info at, and we will assist you with editing um, your header image. And if there's any issues with logging in, so when you log in, you're going to go to WordPress, um, the WordPress website to log in, and you use your username and password to log in. You can reset your password to your email if you forgot your password too. Is there any recommended image size for the header or any anywhere, the profile photo, any kind of recommendations for size? Um, it can't be more than um, two megabytes and it needs to be landscape. All right, but it doesn't have to be specific width by height dimensions, just just wider than it is high? There's no specific, um, but because, because the website can be viewed on different browsers. So depending on what browser, just think about that when you're design, when you're at thinking about your image that it's going to look different on a phone than it does on a web on like a computer. So there is no specific um, dimensions because it changes based on the browser that you're using and how you're viewing it. But for the header image, if you are able to make it header dimensions, if you said longer than uh, wider, then then yes, that would be helpful. And Corey, I just want to make sure, did we clarify, did we clar okay, we care clarified correctly. And I also see there was a question from Emily. Are there opportunities for newer artists to connect with existing artists or observe and assist in larger projects? At the moment, we don't currently organize um, anything like that. But I do know if you go to, you know, different events like especially art walks there's a few around long beach that that is definitely a way to connect with uh, newer artists and uh, and collectives like there's for instance this friday is first fridays and there's a few collectives showing at the expo art center we did do a mentorship um program with a youth artist recently with the utility boxes but that was kind of a special project that was part of a an artist call um, so we haven't actually connected artists yet for that. Um, I can also add that this has been, when I started working at the Arts Council, I would see a lot of work around Long Beach, um, a lot of murals and stuff. So when um, I would work on approving these profiles, I would see work that I've seen around and I'm like, oh my God, now I know the name of the artist that did this and I went to school like taking pictures in front of this mural forever. So one thing that I like to do is I just like will find an artist. I'm like, oh my God. And then I'll just shoot them a follow on Instagram. So if their Instagram's on the profile, you could just connect like that, you know? Um, but that's just my advice. Cause I am very like fangirly and I like to meet the people that inspire me so that I could be like them. <laughs> in the past I, I did I was able to organize some like coffee and conversations and then uh, happy hour 
now that things are opening back up, maybe we can revisit that conversation. Uh, it would be nice to get out uh, and it was very well received. So we could start playing around with that idea. Yeah, also I wanted to address, oh, let me just make sure there's no other question in the chat. Um, I wanted to address a question asked earlier in the chat. Um, Ebony Brown asked if, um, is there a genre for interior designers? And I don't believe that there is, but um, like I said, the artist registry is open to anyone that is an artist. So, you know, if you don't see, like I do makeup. So if I don't see makeup on there, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not gonna apply. I'm just gonna put visual art and still post like my makeup photos. You know, if they're like creative, like makeup looks, I'll still do that. Um, so if you don't see like the exact niche thing that you do, or it's not even niche to be an interior designer, but if you don't see the exact genre, um, still, still do your best and, and pick the categories that you identify with the most. They're a genre for martial artists. I believe that'd be like a performing art. What do you guys think? We have had uh, like capoeira martial artists perform and register and even have events that they participated in our micro grants uh, program. So I, I would say yes. Um, and, and we're also like at adding more categories. For instance, we've just added makeup artists as a category and culinary arts as a category. So interior design, that should be the next one. It doesn't seem like there's any more questions. Um, thanks everybody for attending, unless there's anything else last minute <laughs> questions. Um, we will be posting this video on our website and we'll email it out to everybody um, who registered so that you'll have the recording. And um, we're here for any questions or assistance that you may need. So feel free to reach out if you need help registering or updating your profile. Thank you, good job.